Okay, so I think uh, for the benefit of those, uh, we are discussing, uh, following along uh, in YouTube, we are discussing the uh, chapter 19 uh, of the book, uh, which is about uh, programming with uh, ggplot2. So while going through this chapter, I think I learned a lot. Uh, first of all, for the learning objective, uh, uh, we are going to learn programming single and multiple components uh, of uh, auto program single and both uh, multiple components in ggplot2. Uh, we are also going to learn how to use components and notations and additional arguments in the plots. Uh, and at the end, we are going to wrap up with a, a functional programming uh, using uh, ggplot2. Uh, I think the first of all, uh, uh, they start uh, uh, with this as uh, uh, key sections uh, whereby they tell about uh, uh, the grammar of graphics that each uh, graphs, I think they talk about the different layers that uh, we look at. Uh, we need to have data, then we need to do our aesthetic mapping, then we, we need to scale this data down into values in which our computer can understand how to interpret. Then there is the coordinates and also the team uh, which is going to apply uh, to non data layer. So we are going to see how we can manipulate uh, each uh, of these uh, components uh, in our plots. So maybe feel free to stop me at any point. Uh... Okay, so the first part is talk about uh, programming single and also multiple components uh, of ggplot2. Then. First, they say that in ggplot2, it is possible to build up plot component easily. And because this is a good practice to reduce uh, duplicated code. Because normally they said when we repeat ourselves, uh, in, in uh, when coding, we repeat ourselves uh, more than two times is time for us to extract those repeated code and create the functions uh, to automate that. So we are going to see how uh, we are going to achieve that in ggplot2. So we are also going to see how we can generalize code allows, which allows us to be more flexible when making uh, a customized plots. So the first components we are going to look at how to, how to create this layer, which is uh, jump smooth. How we are, we are going to create a single layer. So here we have our default function, uh, which is uh, jump smooth, okay? We have the method, which is linear model. We specify that the standard error uh, should be false, that the color is equals to what alpha, which because alpha is going to help us to reduce uh, the transparency of this color to around 0 0.5. Then the size is equals uh, to two, okay? So when we have this layer, this is just a single layer we have just created, which is uh, for job smooth. And we are attaching this into assigning it into an object, which we call uh, best fits. Okay, so now how do we apply this layer to our visualization? Maybe uh, we have our plot here where we have data, which is MPG. We have done our aesthetic mapping. We say jump underscore points plus, then we add that layout that we have defined. We have just created best fit. We can see that it's, it's just going to put uh, the best uh, fit line in our plot. And they do discuss in the book that uh, for this approach uh, to work, we must have one particular layer whereby we want to apply these same uh, steps to that particular layer. Then we can just extract, build that layer separate louder than we repeating ourselves, jump smooth, jump smooth. We can just add, we can just add that layer directly uh, to our plot. Then ggplot2 uh, is going to do uh, it's going to do that for us. So I can I can copy this. Uh, let's see it in our studio. Go to my our studio. Copy that. So I can open my script. Okay. 
Let's fit, which is the object I've created. Okay, so they said size because uh, in the latest ggplot2, uh, they have replaced size uh, with line width. So let's do the correction. Line, line width is equals to this. So, so that we could not get that warning. So I can say ggplot data, let me use empty cars. MPG displacement plus geo points. Okay, which will draw the points. So I say best fit, which is the object we create. We can see it will just uh put uh, the best fit line there. It will just put the best fit line there for us. So I don't know. Is there any question? For this, or we should just proceed. I guess there is no question. Mm, I I have a question. Okay. So the best fit is like the that's the function that you declared, right? Yes, or, yes, yes, yes. This is the function. So if I want to invoke the function, if I want to call the function, would I just do best best fit and then parentheses or? Oh, okay. I see. So you just best, call, you said best fit is the function that we define. If you put parentheses, it returns error. Ah, uh, okay. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Okay. So let's go back to the notes, slides. Okay. So that is just uh, for a single component. So we can just use this uh, job smooths and we, we, we provide all the parameters uh, that is going all the parameters argument that is going into the function. So it's going to do that. So alternatively, I think they gave a second alternative here that we can create a function. Here we are creating a function. Then this function, we have a formula, which is y explained by x. Then color, we say alpha, which is still blue, 0 0.5 alpha, which would, uh, reduce the transparency of this color to 0 0.5. Then they are using size. I think we will we'll replace that with line width is equals to two. Then we are adding dot, dot, dot here. So dot, dot, dot simply means that uh, additional other uh, additional arguments can still go uh, into that function in which uh, we are defining. That is why they are using dot, dot, dot. Then they put the coli, the bracing, then they add the next layer, which is job smooth. Then the formula is equals to formula because we have defined the formula yet. So no need uh, to define another formula. So formula is equals to formula. The standard error false method is LM color uh, is equals to color. Then size is equals to uh, size. So they also put dot, 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 means that additional argument can still go in here. Additional argument can still go in there. So that is why they are using the dot, 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 dot. So we can now apply that to our plot. So we can apply that function to our plot using jump lm y tilde poly x2. So this is going to be the best fit is going to be polynomial. Then size is one, then color is equals to red. That is the color of the best fit line. We want it uh, to be red. So once we just uh, run that, we can see that ggplot2 uh, is going to pick uh, the that function, uh, that layer in which we have created, which is job lm, is just going to apply it straight up uh, to, to, to our visualization. Is there any question for this? Uh, or I should try, we should to try that out in our studio. No, I'm good. Okay. So, so the next uh, thing they talk about, uh, the next function is still the same. Uh, 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 because we have seen how we can add 
a single layer uh, to our plot. Maybe what about if we, have, we want to add, we want to modify more than one layer. So how do we do that? So the book advised that for us to modify more than one layer at a go, we need to we need to wrap them in a list. We need to wrap them in a list. So within this list, we have a function which has no is taking no arguments. No arguments uh, is going into the function. So we have our coli. We have our coli here. Then we wrap those uh, uh, those uh, those layer in a list. So the first layer is stats underscore summary. Then function is going to be main, which is going to compute uh, the main for the bar plot in which uh, we are creating. Then we are filling it by grade 70. Then the next line is still uh, start summary. Then the function dot data. So function dot data. So which function are we applying uh, to the raw data that is coming in? Here we are applying main, confidence, level, normal. Then the jump. What do we want to do there? We want it to be actual error bar. Then the width of the error bar will be uh, 0. Uh, 0. 0.4. Oops, sorry. I think I am in the last. The width of the error bar is going to be, I think, 0. 0.4. So once uh, we apply, this is the function. So once, once we apply uh, that function, we can apply that function to our plots by creating these plots, ggplot, passing our data, is do our aesthetic mapping. Then we just say zoom underscore mean, which is going to apply this uh, this function in which we have uh, defined here. Uh, this function in which we have defined is going to apply uh, everything to, to our visualization at the go. So maybe let's see this. Let's let me copy this. Take it to our studio. I hope I am sharing my entire screen. Okay, so this is the function in which we define for the job mean. So once I call, you can see that it's a function. Okay, this one exists in the environment. We can see that the job mean is a function. So once I create this plot, so this is my default plot. Okay, it does nothing. So I just add that function and, and it's just going to apply that function uh, to my plot and it's going to put the error bar there. But if, for instance, we need the error bar to fall behind the bar. So for us to do that, we just need to switch the ordering. Okay, we can bring this down and this up. We just need to switch. We just need to switch the ordering if we want the error bar uh, to be behind the plot. So we just need to change the ordering. So the error bar is going to fall, the lower bound is just going to fall uh, behind uh, the bar. So it's just going to show the upper bound for the error bar. I don't know, are there any questions? So how I should proceed? Okay. So what again? Okay, let me check the book again. Maybe I'm missing something. So we have talked about single, we have talked about multiple. So single components. So this is this, we have discussed this. I uh, hope we have talked about function. Yeah, creating function, we have seen this. Okay, so I think there are some exercise here. They said create an object that represents a pink histogram with 100 beans. Okay, so I think I was able to put some uh, solution together. So we have pink histogram. We are using job histogram, then color. 
of the histogram is going to be pink, then the pins of the histogram is going to be 100. So once I run that, okay, so we can create this histogram with ggplot. Data, I think is empty cars, aesthetics. Then we can say MPG. So once we run this, that is that plus pink histogram. Okay, so once we do that, so we can see that this is the pink histogram because we specify the bean size here to be 100, just as they said. Uh, yeah, they said the bean should be 100. Uh, the histogram should be pink. So that means we should color uh, the, the boundary the boundary of the histogram pink. But if you choose uh, to fill it by pink, you can just change color to fill is equals to pink. Then the second exercise there is a create an object that represents a fill scale with blues color blue palettes. So let's see. So here we use scale color, scale fill distiller, palettes is blues. Then this is, this is blues. Okay, so I run that. Okay, so now I can create this object as plot. So data, I want to use iris, aesthetics, X is species, Y is sepal, sepal length, then fill is equals to species. Loss, fill, Blues. Okay, okay, okay. Fill is equals to uh, sepal dots dot width. You have to add like a geom hist or something. Okay, yeah. Geo box, let's say box plot. No, it can't work here. Yeah. We have X category, let's say Joe Violin. It's still not going to work. Transform the following field is a drop using. Statistical structure I feel this happens when your field fails to infer the correct grouping structure. Oh, feel is equals. What about if I say species? Discrete. Feel is equals to one. Oh, feel is equals to one. No, it works, which is blues. What do I want to do? Okay, I know what to do because the x axis is separate dots with eta dots length. So, John, instead of violin, we should use points. Because scale field distiller, I think it need to be that variable need to be continuous. Sequential, diverging and qual qualitative color scale from color brewer. So let's see this. Yep. So, but we can't see it there. So what do we say? I think if you put um, fill equals uh, either sepal width or 
sepal length, then you'll probably have better luck. Sepal widths. This is it, I doubt so. We are still not seeing the feel. Because oh, this maybe is it's the color. color. Maybe you have to yeah. do color. Even Instead color because spell. this function is scale fill distiller. Except we have to modify it to scale color. Oh, is that it? Oh, okay, my mistake. Yeah, color. Okay. Oh, so did I say color. that? Yeah, I did say that. Good yes. work. Yeah. So let's see if we remove this and say still color. Yep. It still work. It still work. Okay. No problem. Thank you. It still work. Still work, still work. These are the values. So let's go back to the notes. Okay, they say we should read the source code for Tim Gray. That is just by looking at the documentation, what are its I to look at the necessary arguments uh, that can go into uh, Tim Gray and how we should also look at how does it uh, work because uh, we know that by the default, uh, ggplot2 is using the team, the gray background, the team gray, so that we can really see uh, the data points uh, in which we are showing uh, it, uh, but we can choose to use several other team to overwrite uh, the default uh, team gray. I think the last one here, yeah, talk about creating a West, uh, with Anderson uh, color uh, color palette. So how do we do that? We still go over here. This look about the documentation. We can see that complete team. There are complete teams which control all non data display. Team underscore. If you just need to tweak, we can see that team gray is using the base size for the team is eleven. Then the base family. Is, is is using the default. Then the baseline size is equals to base size all over 22. Then base rec size is base size all over uh, 22, which is uh, our, then this is the default. This is the default uh, team gray for that uh, ggplot2 is gonna use uh, by default. So here they were talking about we creating uh, the West Anderson color palette. So here, this is a color palette we are asked to create. So here, I define a function. Then I say the palette is close to what? Bottle, rocket, one. Then I have to use dot, 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 because uh, I still need some additional arguments. I uh, can still go uh, into the function. So. So these are the, the function scale color manual, then values is equals to what Wes Anderson, West palettes, then we pass in uh, our palette because this function is just taking uh, these palettes and also some additional argument can still go. So here we still specify that uh, some additional arguments uh, can still go can still go into the function. So once I run this, so we can see that we can create our plots. Okay, add our points. Okay, then we can apply our West Anderson team. Yep. So we can apply the team that we have created, which with the scale color, uh, with Anderson. So that is how we can create our own uh, color palette. Then we can use it uh, in our own visualization. So now the book now talk about uh, what about uh, if we want to create, if we want to modify, we have seen how to modify one layer and two layers. So we want to go into look Okay, let's look at the border. 
okay, how to use component annotation and additional argument in a plot. So they, they talk about uh, using creating borders, how we're able, how we can create borders uh, for our map using the data set from the map data, whereby they can extract the data from the wall from the database. So using this map data package, so that we have our borders, okay, which is a function database. We are pulling the wall shape file, then the regions will be all the region, then fill to be any, then color will be gray. Uh, the gray 50. So now we have our data frame. So for the date for us to get that data frame, we are using the map data. We are pulling the data from the uh our our database and also the regions. Okay. So we use John Polygon to draw uh, the boundary for each polygon. So we are using AES underscore function. We pass in the longitude, the latitude, and the group using this uh, tilde argument. So then data is gonna be our DF, which we have defined above. Then we are filling by fill, then color is color. Then we still have some additional uh, arguments that can still go into the function. So the inherit dot a aesthetics means that we do not want to that layer to inherit uh, our aesthetic mapping in which we have specified uh, in our visualization. That is why they set it to false. There's also they do not want to show the legend. That is why they specify that show dot legend uh, will be false. So, so if we run this, I think we are going to create these uh, borders uh, because this borders is a function. So we now go straight up to creating the map. So we are using the library maps. Then the data is coming US cities, which is coming from the maps, uh, the maps uh, package. So then we have capital. So this capital is just like a subset of US cities, then capital is equals R to two. Then we have, we pass in the data sets, then we do, we do our aesthetic mapping, passing in both the longitude and the latitude. Then we add in the borders, the borders uh, for the wall shape file. Then we are specifying the limits for both the longitude and the latitude, which goes from my, for the X limits goes from minus 30 to minus 60. Y limits goes from 20 to 50. Then the geometry is a point aesthetic size, which is going to be for the population. So, so each of these points is showing the wall population. So each of those points shows the world population on the map. Then we are using scale size area. Scale size area, which is going to, uh, is going to, uh, which is going to control the size of each of those points. So the ones that have the area in which we have higher population, we know we are going to have a very big point. The areas where we have lower population, the dot sign is going to be very small. So that is why we're using scale size area. Then the code uh, quick map. So this is uh, this is just for tweaking uh, the projection of this map. So once uh, we run this, uh, we are going to get uh, these uh, maps of the wall showing the population of the wall. So we can see areas where we have larger population. We can also see area when we have a lower uh, population. So we have seen uh, basically how to modify uh, one layer and also two layers. So what about if you want to pass in different arguments to a different layer uh, to go? So uh, it might make uh, our code to be very complex, to be very difficult uh, for us to read. So in that case, I think uh, in the book, uh, they do recommend uh, we use uh, this uh, these two function. They modify they modify lists and also uh, they do dot call. So first of all, let's look at what uh, the function is saying in R. So when we say modify modify lists, so when we look at modify lists, so we can see that mod modify lists that is a recursively 
modify elements of a list. So if you want to recursively modify elements in a list, so we are going to use uh, the modify because it modify a possibly nested list recursively by changing a subset of element at each level to match a second list. So we can we can also look at uh, do uh, dot call, which is from base R. You can see that do dot call execution executes a function call, construct and execute a function call from a name or a function and a list of argument to be passed to it. So we can see, we can use do.call to execute uh, uh, the given function. So yeah, we have a, we have a, the same function we have been working on jump underscore main. So here yeah, we have function. We are using dot, 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 which means that we can still pass in uh, some additional arguments uh, can still go in uh, to the function. So we have the bar params, which is a list of arguments. So we have the error bar params, which is still a list of arguments. We have params, which is also a list of several arguments that can go into uh, the function. So we have the bar params. Uh, we have modify lists, which is params and bar params. Then we have we still have the error bar uh, params. We are still using the modify list. We have params and also the, the error bar params. So how do we apply it? We can use bar. We can use execute it using the do.call. Then we have the start summary, uh, modify list. Then the list is going to be function of mean. The geometry is bar, field is grade 70. Then we have bar params again. So we also have error bars. We are using do.call to execute uh, the function. Then we, at the end, we have list, bars, and also error bars. Those, those are the two components. So for us to apply this to the plot, so we have our, our data, we have our aesthetic mapping, we have our function, which is zoom mean. Then here yeah, we are passing in color should be what steel blue. Then error bar params. For the error bar params, we want it to be list. Then we specify the width of the bar error bars to be 0 0.5 and the size, uh, the size should be one. So once we specify that, it's just going to create our plot for us. Though I know this looks uh this looks a little bit uh, uh, complex. Just uh, for, uh, it's just for us to take some time uh, to look at uh, what uh, the code is uh, doing, and uh, look at the components that really interest us. That we then we just modify uh, that uh, components. Uh, then we can just pass it uh, directly to our plots. Okay, I don't know. I don't know if there are any question. Hello. Yeah, well, we're still here. we're still here. Okay. So let's see. Let's see. We have seen how we can modify more than one argument on a go. So now they now go to the last part, which is about uh automation processes, uh, because uh using uh, functional programming, because uh, I think uh, there is a saying that if we write, uh, repeat ourselves more than two times in a, when we, so it's, it's better we uh, extract uh, those uh, duplicated code and turn everything into a function. So I think this is a tidy uh, Tuesday data set. So they just pull in uh, the data set using the read underscore. CSV function to read in the tool and also the reputation data sets. And here they were doing some data wrangling, group by, summarize, they ungroup, and then they mutate here to 2022. So they are filtering out for all the missing data. Then they are doing some joins by some certain area where we have matches. So now they now create the plots using a function. So, and this function is taking two arguments, 
which is always the data and also the mapping. Okay, so the data, and then we say ggplot2, mapping, jump call, then the width of the call, show that legend is false, jump text, we look at sjaws to be zero, font face should be bold, uh, show that legend should be false, scale wide discrete, okay, so expand, uh, we limit the expansion. So for uh, for the teams, they were using a uh, GG team, scale color, continuous tableau, then the palette is green gold. Yeah, also they're using green gold. Labs, they should choose not to show the labs, then they did some teaming to tweak the appearance of the plot. So now all this, uh, they created, an object called call rank plots. So now they can apply this to the actual data. We have rank plot, data is DF, the mapping is equals to AES, X is pack FCT reorder company by rank. Okay, Y is rank, fill is rank, color is rank, and label is equals to rank. So once we run this, we are going to get a uh, we are going to get uh, this uh, visualization. I think another step, another step in which we can also do another approach in which we can also do uh, is that we can use the coli coli syntax whereby I can have my plot, my plot function, which is the name of the function. So I call, I call my function. My function has data and. Uh, and y var, okay? So this is my function. So I can say data and then ggplot aes, okay? Then I wrap it within coli, my y, my y var, okay? My y var plus geom, geom histogram, okay? So let me say this is plot hist, okay? So this is plot hist. So now I can now say I can call my plot, plot underscore hist, then data, I can just say data, data is empty cars or y var. So y var should be mpg. So when we run this, we need to wrap this in a string. What is that? What am I missing? Could not find function pipe. Okay. Did you library tidyverse? Yes. Yeah, I did not. I did not. Sorry. I only did library uh, ggplots. That is why. So once we, oh. uh, why do I miss? Uh, we have data and then ggplot. Up the door. What do I miss? <laughs> plot. Sorry, I'm plot. not helpful. Plot hist, which is a function, which is a function. So I'm you're missing, missing an N in that second function and the first, yeah, the one that you're writing, you're missing the, the first N uh, on line 31, F-U-N. Yeah. Oh, 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 oh. I'm, 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 I'm just glad I'm not live coding because I know how hard it is. <laughs> yeah, data. Oh, do you need to put data in uh, the, the, the parentheses and then the squiggly brackets there? on line 
Yes, yes, yes. Line yes. 37. Okay, you mean this? Yeah, does that okay, mean let's we have see. a parentheses and then squiggly bracket? Okay, let's, let's remove the data first. No, data need to be. We need to have data here. Yeah, you do. Yeah. But I'm just saying on line 37, you had it on line so, 37 before? Yes, yes. And you didn't have the, the squiggly brackets Break. on it. Okay, okay. I think that might have been it. That's my first guess. So you have to go you online. So hit go to the front of the line, hit enter, go data, and then but you have to put squiggly brackets around data, don't you? You have to put I doubt, I doubt, I and doubt. And then you have to put, but you have to put the parentheses too, because you're calling it from the function. Right? You have to put parentheses. So when you have AES uh parentheses squiggly bracket y there or something like that, don't you? No, 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 no. Well, Stands what do you have to do? Around. Well, why do you have, when you have AES, you look on line 37, line 38. Yes, that's it. Now go over, right. Now you have the 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 yellow parentheses and then the pink squiggly brackets. Yes, you have yes. To have that I think the for problem the data. is this line. Data, okay. We have AES. We have poly. I think we have Y, Y var. Let's comment this. Let's remove this. Let's stop this. Why is this code breaking? Don't you have data? I mean, if you look in the chat, don't you need to put data like that? Okay, let's see. No, you, no, 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 no. Well, if you're calling Y there like that, then don't you need to call data like that inside the let's, print? Okay, let's see, let's see. I mean, that's my first guess, but I could be wrong. Well, that is not how I used to call it. That is what I said. Well, let's okay. try it. Uh, maybe this will, I don't know. That's my first guess. It did not work. It, well, it gave you a different error though. Yes. It gave you a different uh, error. So I think yes. that, that is an improvement. Yes. Right? So it's not popping up the other error. I don't know what this error is though. Oh, oh, this error, I think I did not add a plus sign here. Okay, so there you go. Now we got it. Oh. Now it's I giving us something the error got in the first layer because the error in check aesthetics. Same must be either lens one or the same as data to fit. The following. Uh, let's see what we can do. Okay, I think the book they have an example. Let's check. Okay, this is good. It's good for to be to debug this kind of stuff. I think I saw one example. Uh, it's like I saw one example plot function. Yeah, it was with the pie charts. You can see they have data, they have mapping. Okay, so then they don't need the, the yes. curly bracket yes. and the, the in, parent, But the in this one, they did not use the curly, the curly brackets. bracket or the But I'm looking for the example with curly brackets. Oh, it was somewhere. I saw one. There is where I saw them. They did. There okay, you is. can see here. They failed. Yeah, they did not put the curly bracket. No, they but if you, if you look at the one below it, they used it. Okay, yeah, they use it. Oh, it was double, not single. Sorry. <laughs> no, it's fine. I I knew it was something about notation. I just didn't know which one it was. It was double curly bracket, boy. I'm using a uh, single curly bracket. Uh, that is why the code break. So go uh, down, so... and I, and maybe you need. Do you need? Okay. I need to add the second one here. I need to add the second one here so that the code will be valid. Yeah. <laughs> there we go. Good work. <laughs> because I know I saw something like that uh, in the book. I think that is just uh, the summary. Uh, this one is just uh, the same function they were trying to do to create a pie chart where they have data, they have a variable. Okay. So they have data and variable. So for them to do the field, 
they are using coli coli double coli brackets because they are trying to use uh, the principle of uh, data maxing tidy evaluation. Uh, then they use jump bar here, yeah, jump call, x lab set to null. So they now call data and then they pipe it to a pie chart. They set class. So so this draws uh, the pie chart. So this simply means that if we are using the double uh, coli, this makes it easy to update the pie chart uh, function very easy because we can just pass in the bar as a, we using double coli so we can specify our variable. I wonder why you have to do it for the variable but not for the data. Any ideas? Uh, for the data, because normally, uh, for the data, they believe uh, the data is, I think to me, my own guess, I think the data is outside the static mapping. Because looking at this, I think the data falls outside of the AES. Then if you look at the AES, uh, we need to find, look for a way to tell uh, ggplot2 that look for this var in the data. And for us to do that, we need to wrap it with this double curly bracket so that once we are to execute this pie chart function, we want to always tell ggplot2 that look for this variable uh, in the data. So anything which I am feeding in. But how is that different know, than what we usually do? Because we usually, it usually looks for the variable in the data. Oh. Uh, That's what's confusing, I guess, to me. Because like now what we are doing here is still the same thing. It's still the same thing. It's still the same thing, but what we are doing here, we are creating our own function for pie charts separately. We are creating our own function. So we need a way to pass in our variable to that function. And this function is taking just two arguments. So we need to tell it a way that we tell the pie chart function that look for the class variable from the MPG data set. And for us to achieve that, uh, we need to wrap this in double code in the, in, the, in the function when we are creating the function. We need to wrap it with that double code such that when we are to run uh, the pie chart function, we are simply telling it, look for the variable called class in the MPG data set. So if there is any variable called class, then it's going to pick that variable, then it's going to draw uh, the pie charts. I don't know if some if one has uh, any other inputs. I think that is all I was able to achieve in the chapter. Because if you check through the notes, it's just some resources. Uh, they talk about they show some resources. ggplot2, ggplot extending how to extend ggplot2. Then if you want to think on how to extend it to by creating a different layer, then they recommend that we look at the the vignettes of the extending ggplot2, which is in uh, the book. So they also talk about functions that. Uh, for us to uh, really learn more about uh, functions. So we need to read uh, the advanced uh, chapter uh, of functional programming. I think uh, that is all. So maybe I will just would stop in the chats. Then I think we need to, I 